Good morning. Hello, how's it going? Monday. Monday. Hey. So, I hope you got your coffees. I got my water. I got my smoke. And I got my coffee. Happy Monday. And this is your Delhi Philly Sports Vocabulary Philosophy Motivational Gaming Show. And I am a fancy clown. I'm happy to be here. How you doing? So if you've been here before, you already know what I'm about to do. Start us off with a song today. I've been waiting, I've been working, searching, trying my best. I'm failing, I'm failing. I don't know if I'm ever had an answer to the test. I'm failing, I'm failing. I've been praying, yeah, trying to strong for the babies, yeah. Working my patience, boy. I ain't waiting, Lord. I'm failing, yeah, I'm failing. I've been waiting, I've been working, certain, trying my best. I've been praying, yeah, trying to strong for the babies, yeah. Lately, I've been dropping a lot of tears. I put a lot of smoke up in the air. Every day, the devil in my ear. Go to sleep when I dream about the years. I can feel the static in the air. My habits that I fear. I've been killing, yeah, drilling for fulfillment, yeah. I just need to go somewhere. I wanna be anywhere but here. Am I the only one that cares? Will I forget if I have another bed? I think I need real help with my prayers. I'm unprepared. I've been waiting, I've been working, searching, trying my best. I'm failing, I'm failing. I don't know if I'm ever had an answer to the test. I'm what up, King of Kings? I was trying to send you that picture. I think I sent the picture right after that. Did you get the picture? so ready. I don't got no fucking ashtray though. Alright, gotta improvise. Anyways, how we doing? What up Azor? Go birds! You already know. What up Azor? What up King of Kings? It's a Monday, man. I got a case of the Monday madness or the Monday motivation. That's what we're going to call it. Uh, let me show you all the setup. Whoever else is here. This is me with a green screen. That is my microphone hanging off of the ceiling. Hooked up to the interface. The interface is plugged into my computer. I got the OBS popping. That's going into the Elgato sitting there on the flow, which is going to the Xbox, which is going to the TV. And I think that is everything. I got this webcam sitting right here. Um, yeah, man. Monday. Monday. Monday motivation. So let's go ahead and get into the word of the day, man. I hope y'all had a good weekend. Happy to see y'all here once again. Starting to feel like this is a, a nice little hangout. You know what I'm saying? So here's the word of the day. As we start. Now, I always get these words of the day, right? No, yeah, I cut that shit this morning. It's for the seasons, man. You know how the seasons change. 
I let the beard grow in over this week, and then I cut the stash this morning, so I look normal again. Yeah. Magnum P.I. will be back next summer, though. Don't you worry. Um, I'm, I'm going uh, chin strap. I'm going chin strap, Brian, pretty soon. I just got to let this get a little thicker. Then I'm going to just lose the stash. I didn't know that was going to be the topic of uh, discussion. But anyway, so I be getting these words, right, when I read articles or when I read books. That's where I get most of these words. And I also have, like, a... Um, an app on my phone where I could play like word games and shit. Matter of fact, it's the dictionary app, the Merriam-Webster dictionary app. They got like word games on there and shit. So sometimes I come across these words in that way. And then I come and I look them up on Google or Bing in this case. And the definition is completely different than what I've written down. <laughs> um, so the shit that I got written down is overall bad for you over time. All right. So like anything that degrades your uh, quality of life, yeah, go chin strap. What up, bro? Good to see you, man. Happy happy Monday, bro. Motivation Monday, baby. Yo, I tried to send you a a, a text or whatever, and that joint got pinged back to me. I don't know. It might have been my uh my connection at the time, but I don't know. Let me know if you got a new number though. Uh, so anyway, this one says it's an adjective, obviously, so a descriptive word. It says having a harmful effect especially in a gradual or subtle way. So you know what? That's pretty close to what I had. Like I said, overall bad for you over time. Yeah. So uh, an example of that, uh, I watched a lot of football over the weekend, and playing football without good fundamentals can be a real pernicious uh, pursuit because you could get fucking hurt. Yes, exactly. That's what Monday is about. We, uh, we all get a little bit of break over the weekend. I mean, maybe not you because you're in a different kind of business, but we all get a little bit of a break over the weekend. And sometimes Monday just look like a like an uphill battle and shit. So motivation Mondays, my boy. Motivation Mondays. So let's see what they got. He is one of the most pernicious influences in the party. Oh, so boy, asshole. Boy will be making, boy will be making motherfuckers uh, life dangerous and shit. Boy will be bringing... Ill effects to niggas. <laughs> That's fucked up. Uh, synonyms are harmful, damaging, destructive, injurious, hurtful, detrimental. I like this one. Deleterious. I don't use that. I don't use that word at all. Um, but I may start. Anyways, so that's the word. Now, I wasn't able to stream this Saturday, and I apologize for those of you expecting it. Uh, I had some issues with Comcast over the weekend, so while a lot of people felt like they wasn't doing shit and they had a nice little break, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I don't mean to assume anything, uh, while I expected to have a nice little break <laughs> and a nice little time away from streaming or being expected to do anything, I was, uh, I was confronted with the issue of no internet, and it's really hard to do anything in life without internet. Besides that, I got locked out of my email. So I basically couldn't do shit. I couldn't pay my bill. Like Comcast, you pink. You said, are you pink? I don't know. You must have signed out and signed back in because you was purple before and now you red. Yeah, it just changed you. You must have signed out and signed back in. But uh, yeah, so dude, on the phone with Comcast, trying to get a person. Took me a day and a half to get a person, and I had to persevere, bro. I had to really persevere. So apparently, they got a no talking to people policy now, and with that policy, they also have a you must log into your uh, account in order to pay your bill. Because I used to just be able to go pay my bill online by putting in my address and putting in my credit card. Because you know, who's paying people's bills? Who's going around paying motherfuckers' bills illegally and shit? So now. Not allowed to do that. So I had to sign in, which means I had to have access to my fucking email so I could confirm. Couldn't do that. So I had to go a day or two without internet until I could get myself back into my email because they made me change my password because, you know, two-factor two, two authentication and shit. They was like, your shit been the same for too long. You got too used to it. Let's change it up on you. So that happened to me. It was a thing. I ain't even going to complain about it because there's much more serious things happening in the world. Like, for instance... Tory Lanez just got denied bail. He was supposed to do 10 years. And that's what it looks like he's going to be doing, barring any type of appeal situation. So uh, for those of you not in the know, he was found guilty of shooting 
Megan Thee Stallion, I guess. And uh, he got 10 years. And uh, I was thinking about doing like this whole thing where I just want to go like bring all the niggas home. And I was telling people about this for a couple of weeks. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. I'm going to say that I don't believe in prison. I do believe in justice. But I think prison is crazy. I don't think prison is for nobody. And niggas was saying all types of crazy shit online. Niggas was like, he was a bitch before he shot her. Now he going to be somebody bitch in jail. And it's like, come on, man. Do you want rehabilitation and betterment for that man? What you want for that nigga, bro? So, in honor of Tory Lanez and R. Kelly and uh, YNW Melly and uh, all, the, uh, all the jailbirds right now, I know I'm missing somebody important. But uh, in honor of all them niggas, I'm going to do a, a slightly dramatic reading of uh, What's Your Life Like. Not by Young Dolph. R.I.P. Young Dolph. Shit could be hard out here, but it ain't that hard. Okay. So. They ready to let me go all through this, pause. All right, so. He only got two verses on this, John. So he just go. I'm going to just get right into it, bruh. I'm going to just get right into it. Bill Cosby, he free already. Bill Cosby been got out. Bill Cosby been out, bro. He, he, been, he got free during, uh, I think, the pandemic because of health issues or whatever. He kept getting sick, so he appealed on behalf of that. And, like, he, he might be on some old school house arrest shit, but he ain't in jail no more. Um, so, yeah, uh, free the guys. Niggas want to know if Beanie Siegel life is real. Nigga, 25 to life is real. I get a body, take me right to jail. I know what it's like in hell. I did a stretch in a trifling cell. He said he know what it's like in hell, yo. That remind me of a, um, a quote from Churchill. He said, uh, if you find yourself walking through hell, keep going. <laughs> um, I did a stretch in a trifling cell. BG, yeah, BG out. I like BG. I always fuck with BG. Plus, what was BG in jail for? I don't even know what BG was in jail for, bro. He said, this, this nigga Bean said, what you know about 23 and 1, locked down all day, underground, never seeing the sun? See, you need that. That's vitamin D, bro. You need that. Visits stripped from you, like clothes or something. Strip them shits from you. Never seeing your son. You got bricks on the strip. Never see him get done. What you know about all day? Them little Debbies and them Chi Chi's. They be making you sick. You gotta wash out your drawers. Same water you shit. Brush. Gargle and spit. The same water you piss. Somebody who been in jail can tell you more about that, but apparently, like, them niggas got like one sink that they got to pee in slash brush their teeth out of and all of that shit. I don't know. I never been there. Sorry. I'm not speaking from experience. You down with this nigga. You done killed his brother. But dog, don't think he don't know it. Think he a sucker because he don't show it. Pause, vitamin D. <laughs> Payback's a motherfucker and he won't blow it. What you know about them four letters? Not the kind you write. Or the kind you sit down and type. Sign at the margins. Get it right. I'm talking about that real time. Life like Eddie and Martin. To my niggas, that's up the fort. When I get there, fuck a pack. Hand me a log. And a push ride toilet sword. I don't understand none of that. I mean, I could figure it out. I could use the context clues and shit, but I'm not that hardened. <laughs> so when I hit these niggas up, they can't call the guards. Right. And then he proceeds to say, what's your life like? Mine's is real. Everything is signed and sealed. 
says that for a good bit. It's pretty sad, man. It don't seem like there's any light or redemption or any rehabilitation in any of this. Let's move on to the second verse. What you know about solitary, lockdown, no commissary, and you wild already. They had that wrong, I think. And you just seen your mom get buried. You got drowns coming in all kinds of flurries. I don't know what that means. What you know about your towel on your cell when you alone at night? Or the jailhouse hunger strike? Or you sitting in your cell just in the zone one night? And you thinking, damn, I'm never coming home one night. You got five years in, and you've never been flown a kite. You hearing grown men moan at night. Hey, listen, you're going to get a lot of pauses. You hearing grown men moan at night, man. That's what, that's what this pause is all day with this. They got you stuck in a can. White man got you fucking your hand. Your wife on land fucking your man. That's some, that's some shit right there. What you know about no parole? Life in the hole. Life's cold. You be eating them swags. Guards on a night shift, they be beating you bad. The hardest nigga term, bitch, he's sleeping with fags. What you know about getting and shipping balloons? Keep switching positions in the visiting room. Gotta take x lax hope you get it in time. Gotta shit in your palm just to get the Haran. And you talking about your life is this, your life is that. Your life ain't shit, your life is whack. Man, you listening to the realest nigga. Close your eyes, motherfuckers. Tell me you don't feel this nigga. Okay, so. um, I just basically wanted to take that opportunity to say that. Jail ain't for nobody, man. And there ain't really no, uh. Ain't really no, ain't no light there, man. Ain't no sun. I don't really see that shit working out. So. Prayers for, uh, your man Tory Lanez. Even though. Can't be walking around shooting women and shit. Especially women you're in a relationship with. I mean, shit, any woman, anybody. I don't know. Just stop shooting motherfuckers, please. All right, let's get into the sports shit. This is going to be pretty quick because I watched so much goddamn football yesterday. It's ridiculous, bro. I can't even think straight. All right, the Giants broke a comeback record. The Phillies is three games ahead, still number one in the wild card. Uh, we took two out of three from the Cardinals. Everybody seems to be cooling down, but it's okay because I want everybody to heat back up when October starts. I'm cool with that. Um, the Buffaloes played the Rams. Coach Prime. That shit was a shootout. It was way closer than a lot of motherfuckers expected it to be. Um, Travis Hunter got hurt. He ended up getting hit hard as hell on what a lot of people say was a dirty play. But on that note, there is a 14 that escaped juvie this weekend. So we just gonna keep, wait, a 14. So we, I don't know what you mean by 14, but what's up with motherfuckers just, just getting out of jail like it ain't shit. Like, what's the bars for? <laughs> it's crazy. Five teens escaped jail this, uh, juvie this weekend together. Hmm. Huh. That's interesting. Shit, I kind of want to check that out. So, while I speak on this sports, uh, Travis Hunter got taken out of the game. Then he came back to the game, but then he went to the hospital shortly after that. And they missed him because he plays defense and offense. I don't know if y'all know, but he was that freaking nature kid that was playing CB and wide receiver. He basically did like over 100 snaps in the game. And Dion was like, we're going to put a hot tub on the plane for him. <laughs> um, but ultimately, they uh, endured and they won. Um, and, oh, another ironic thing. I remember I reported on the, uh, head coach of the other team, the Rams, Jay Norvell saying that, uh, he, he puts, he takes his glasses and his hat off when he's talking to adults, like his mother taught him. Dion took that shit super personal. Dion got pissed off about that and then said, no, it's personal. So while he did that, um, bro, I ain't know the boy Jay Norvell was black. He said... 
it was just like a big thing for this rivalry because this is two black coaches in the first time in history. I'm like, man, the way you was talking about that nigga mom raising him, I didn't think he was even black in his voice. But, yeah, so that was kind of funny. But it was actually black. And that team kept up. Sorry, you guys can see how hard it is to fucking try to uh talk while fucking writing this shit. Escaped. Juvenile. Is this local? Does this shit happen? Because I know Juvenile Detention Center, right? I know this shit is fucking... 56 minutes ago? God damn, nigga, you got the up to the fucking moment headlines and shit. Oh, they captured four of them. That's good. Five are still in a run. Okay, let's see what happened. CNN. All nine teens who escaped from Pennsylvania Juvenile Detention Center have been captured. Police say. All nine. That's good. That's good. I mean, is it good? Maybe they innocent. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Are they innocent? What they do? I don't know who, what alerted homeowners they were. I'm skipping all types of shit. Five can stole the vehicle. Four were captured in pursuit. They basically gave up. There you go. They was, they was just trying to get a uh, little joy ride going. Police also employed the canines and drones. Yeah, them niggas wasn't trying to see them canines, bro. We're asking people in the area again, kind of like if we did two weeks ago. Lock everything up. Take your keys out of your car. Be vigilant. Damn. Same area, huh? Well, I guess there's one lesson there. Try not to live next to a prison. What else is there? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, school's closed because of this. To, again? They just don't value education, bro. They don't value education at all. Speaking of which, man, I was motherfucking... Do I got anything else on sports? I think I can move on, man. Uh, yeah, I think I can move on from the sports. I ain't really got much else. Everybody else is talking about football today, so I'm chill. Um, I saw this the other day, and I can't really play the whole thing because it was an article that you listened to, but, um, why so many American kids are struggling to learn how to read and how to fix it. Um, basically the whole gist of it, this is just in response to what, you know, niggas was just saying, I'm saying like, they don't give a fuck about keeping these kids out of school. But that's like I said the other day. They don't even give them homework. So I realized they don't care about school. Um, and as far as the script go, they just trying to keep niggas scared. You, you know that already. They trying to keep motherfuckers panicked and shit. I, I feel like, I mean, I'm biased when it comes to these things because I'm automatically going to believe the worst about shit. But, I mean, if you realistically just look at the effects of all of these things, like, seriously, bro. I was saying uh, I was saying to my homie on the phone the other day, I'm like, how traumatizing is that to have to be like, you hearing helicopters, you can't go to school, you can't go to the store, niggas is telling you to stay in the crib, you got woods behind your crib, you know there's a fucking murderer in the woods for a week, two weeks, they telling you, stay in the house, protect yourself, be, you know, be scared, like, that shit is gonna wear on a child, I mean, an adult, too, but imagine how much more a child. What up, Cyrene? Good to see you, my guy. Happy Monday. The word of the day is pernicious, Cyrene. It means uh, slowly and gradually damaging. So drinking coffee might be pernicious. I'm not sure. The studies aren't in yet, is it? Smoking definitely is. <laughs> Just lost my first rec game. Oh, look at you, man. You're not undefeated no more. Shit. Hey, but look, man. I know you're going to bounce back. I know you're going to bounce back. The song of the day was uh, fail, about failure and shit. So that was kind of cool. Um, so with this whole thing, like, I read this article and shit, and they were saying that uh, what, what schools try to do now is they'll show kids picture books, and they'll try to get them to use different um different skills around the word like using context clues if they can't figure out a word using context clues using the pictures and shit but basically trying to bring together every uh clue that they can find to kind of grasp at and guess at the word whereas like the uh alternative to that is not necessarily what they specialize in, in teaching right now from what i'm reading from what i'm hearing um it's literally just having a 
a scientific approach to it where you're like putting the words together and helping them to remember the phonics and the phonemes. Uh, the phonemes is like word combination or letter combinations, two letters put together, three letters put together. Um, and then you help them remember those and then you put them into practice. I mean, that's how I think I learned it. That's how I remember uh, specifically. There was a lot of fucking try it out and then there was a lot of review. So with that said, like, the whole gist of this article was to just say, like, it's so important to read with your kids, like, at whatever age. It's so fucking important to read with your kids. I know King of Kings reads with his kids. Um, you just reminded me of the Juvenile Bounce Back song. Damn, that's a good song. Oh, what, 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 world? That's a good song. That's a good song. Um, shit, I'm about to play that song later when I uh, eat my sushi. Um, but... Yeah, got to read with the kids. So I was reading with my young boy this weekend, and uh, we was like, it was, at first, we thought it was going to be a struggle. We both walked into it like, and this ain't the first time. I read with him a lot. But this time, it's like, it's been difficult for him because I have to pick levels of the books and shit because certain things he just going to struggle with. We're not going to make it far. Then certain other things aren't going to challenge him. So you know what I'm saying? I got to pick. And, mm. So anyway, we found something that we could read. Um there's actually a book right over there. It's called Money Matters for Kids. It teaches them about money and shit, the value of it, and the use of it, the history of it especially. Um, but read the book, got through that, kept reading, read some other shit. Then we looked up some jokes online, started reading jokes to each other and shit. It was fucking dope. Uh, we ended up reading for like an hour or two. And I was like, all right, listen, kiddo, we're going to do this every day. You know what I'm saying? So what time do you think we should do it? He was like 7.15. I was like, my God. So I put it in my jaw. He looked forward to it. This morning before he went to school, we did a uh, multiplication table together. We actually had fun. It was hilarious. It was like a little competition. He was like, how do you still remember it? I'm like, because I used that shit. Um, so that was cool, man. Yeah, we used to read subtitles on anime. That helped a lot. But you know what? My lazy ass doesn't do that anymore. I do not read subtitles on anime no more, bro. I look up dubs, and if there's no dubs, and I ain't watching that shit. Because you know why? It makes my eyes very tired, yo. It makes my eyes super tired to read like 24 minutes of talking. And then on top of that, when you're so focused on the words, you can't focus on the fucking artwork and the action and the facial expressions. And you know what I'm saying? You watch dubs by yourself and subs with the kids. The kids watch anime. The kids watch subs. That's what's up. That's you making them read, I guess. <laughs> That's you reading with them, right? That works. Uh, I ain't mad at that. But yeah, this article is dope as hell. It basically just told me, if you don't read with the motherfuckers, then you can't expect them to learn, because it's on you. Ha. There you go. Um, and also, like the implication of the title, everyone is struggling. And they were saying, there was one quote in this, John, that was very important to me. Um, they were saying, like, how come third grade seems to be the year where everything seems to pop off and people start to notice, like, um, people start to notice like kids are actually really struggling. Like the struggles start to manifest themselves in different areas and different subjects of their life. And that's the lady was like, oh, that's because once they get to about eight years old, third grade, that's because they're no longer expected to learn to read. They're expected to read to learn at this point. So having a weak vocabulary or having weak reading skills or comprehension skills actually slows them down in science, slows them down in social studies, slows them down in math if word problems are going on that day. He said, I got that book. What book, bro? Read faster. Speed reading. I got that book. What book? I want that book. I'm trying to read faster too. I read slow as shit. I read like, it take me about, take me about eight hours to a hundred pages. That's how fucking, that's how fast I, I read. Yeah, about eight hours to 100 pages to actually, like, keep the information, to retain it. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, off that. What's this? I don't remember what this is. Lord God, you'll be, oh, yeah, this man Lamar wrote this this morning. I don't even know what this was about. Oh, no, he wrote it last night. I thought it was 9.56 a.m. Lord God, you'll be with us when you take a stand for you in faith. When we defy the world's standards and refuse to fit in with the surrounding culture, we may 
pay a price. But we, like Daniel's three friends, must resolve not to bow to idols, even if you do not rescue us from resultant suffering or even death. But we know that you can always deliver us and trust you will work all things together for our good. Amen. All right, that's the word. Go ahead, Lamar. Yo, honestly, I, I looked that John up and I was trying to, uh, I didn't start reading it, but I started the beginning of it and was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Did this nigga get injured yesterday? And uh, I don't know. I guess we'll figure that out at some other time. Um, so let me see. Keeping it on the subject of motivation. Keeping it on the subject of motivation. I got another X. Do I got another X link? Yep, I got another X link. I just want to let y'all know the following content contains graphic languages and images of violence. Viewer discretion is advised. But I also want some feedback. So if y'all niggas look at this, I want you to tell me what's going on and who's wrong. All right. First time you have till September 16th to take. All right, let's get right in the beginning. Well, I did issue a, for a defective equipment. It's $80. Uh, you have till September 16th to take care of this. Uh, get you to sign there with the Exodus. So you don't even give a warning for this? You've been driving around for six months like that. I'm truthful. Well, I'm not going to give you a warning for something you've been driving for six months. But, well, I don't want to sign it because I don't want to do that. You don't want to sign it? No, because I don't think that I deserve to pay $80 for something that is fixable and I can fix it. All right. That's all you want Go ahead, to do. step out of the car. Why? Because you're under arrest. Step out. Step out of the vehicle. Step out. Step out. I'm giving you a lawful order to step out. You be fair with me and I'll be fair with you. Step out. No. You're under arrest. No, I'm not. She said no, Nick. I'm placing you under no. arrest. Step you out. You are full of because you're not placing me under no arrest. Do not, do not oh, take shut off. Shut up and give me that and I'll sign it. Step out. No. no we're beyond that. You want me Step to... out. She was like, nigga, please. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Sorry for the Get noise. out of the car. That shit ringing in my ears. Get out ears. of the car. Get out of the car. You better leave me. Put your hands behind your back. Leave me alone. Put your hands behind your back. No. Now. She mean it. Put your hands behind your back! Put your hands behind your back! Lay down and put your hands behind your back! Now! No, you will not! Yes, you draw. You're gonna get it again! Yo, brah, I'm still trying to figure out what book you talking about, yo. I'm sorry for the sirens. Do you realize you just got yourself in a whole lot more trouble? What? For running? Oh, I didn't run. I told you you weren't going to arrest me. I pulled in here thinking that you would have You hurt? Yeah, I'm hurt. What hurts? Everything. All right, I got EMS on the way to sing tight. You got a what on the way? I got an ambulance on the way to check you out. Ambulance? I don't need an ambulance. Well, you got tased, so they got to check you out. You did not have to taser me. You wouldn't comply. You wouldn't get out. And then you tried to kick me. So, Why? yes, I did. Yeah, I tried to kick you because yeah. I'm a country girl. Because, no, I and didn't you got like That country girl shit is pernicious. Yes, and I didn't like being thrown on the ground. Well, next time, listen to what I'm telling you to do. Okay. Who was wrong? And, like, try to have a heart, too. Like, imagine us your mom or, like, somebody you give a fuck about. Who's wrong?
And then same as the, the, the police ball. Imagine that's your job. Imagine you got to be in that position to tase some fucking old lady who's probably going to have a fucking heart attack from you tasing her. Who's wrong? Anybody? What's one good thing about Switzerland? I don't know, but the flag is a big plus. Anyways, so I guess I'll answer that for myself then. I personally looked at this whole thing, and I thought it was fucking hilarious. I ain't feel too bad about laughing at it because they was both okay, right? I don't think anybody's whole, you know, her life was probably put in danger. Who knows how her heart is or whatever. But I think they was both fucking wrong. I think they was both wrong. She was wrong. There you go. Appreciate you, King of Kings. King of Kings says she's wrong. Um, I think they was both wrong. I think she was wrong. I think she was wrong. I think um, she was trying to she was trying to dictate the situation, and it wasn't the time to do that. Um, I think eighty dollars is a hell of a situation that she could have uh, been able to go to sleep at night with, but it was harder for her to go to sleep at night knowing she had been tased, had to show up to court, had to get bailed out. And had to spend some time in the motherfucking cell. So, oh yeah, and they had to go get her car out of goddamn tow, whatever. Um, so, I think that was that was definitely wrong on her part. But on on the on the same note, I think the uh the cop bull. I don't think he had to tase her, yo. <laughs> I think he did that shit to teach her a lesson. I think he probably realized like you know, this bitch. She, she, she drawling, like, she in the way. And, like, uh, another motherfucker probably had every right to put, like, real hands on her. You know what I mean? He ain't really try to put real hands on her. Like, he ain't, he ain't toss her down and put his fucking knee on her head. You know what I mean? Or on her throat. Um, so he ain't go as hard as he could have did. But I think he still went a little harder than he had to. Like, for instance, me personally, I could have, I could have been like, all right, what if we called a dog in? Call the dog and let the call, let the dog bark at her a little bit. I don't know. Let the dog bark at her a little bit. He already pulled his pistol out and like pointed it at her. And the thing is, you can't pull your fucking gun out and point it at somebody unless you're gonna shoot. So she called this bluff on that. Like nigga, you ain't finna shoot me through my motherfucking window. I ain't posing no harm to you. So he was kind of he was kind of like forced to take some type of action after he pulled his gun out and didn't shoot her. You know what I'm saying? He did that early. He he pulled his gun out way too early. She did. She bought that. She was wrong. She kicked at him. You're right. She was wrong. I'm not saying she's not wrong. I think he was wrong, though. And no, his life wasn't in danger. Nigga, she kicked at him from the ground when he was trying to cuff her. You know what I'm saying? She was resisting arrest, absolutely. But I don't know. All I got to say is, if you was that cop, right, and you was in that position, you would seriously take the risk of having that woman's life be in your hands once you hit that tase on her? You would, you would want her life in, her, in your hands after you... Nah, I, I wouldn't want to take that risk. I wouldn't want to take the risk of having, like, extra shit to fill out. Walking home thinking to myself, like, damn, I done had to kill somebody over a fucking $80 ticket today? Because you, you know, because you tased them and they got all fucked up over it. She could have fell straight to the floor, hit her fucking face in the floor. You know what I'm saying? Anything could have happened. But I think that is because she clearly did not pose a danger. She wasn't trying to attack that nigga or nothing. She was literally just trying not to get arrested <laughs> in every possible way. Um, he ain't had no backup with him either. That was kind of weird to me. Niggas are supposed to usually call backup. Also, when you, uh, it's, I, know, I know it's not when you um, arrest women, but when you search women, they usually say you got to have a woman officer on you. So, like, I probably would have called a woman officer and was like, yo, yo, come get physical with her real quick because I ain't even trying to do this. Lady, remind me of my goddamn auntie. Um, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. There's alternatives, man. I mean, in the, in the moment, it's not easy to think about that shit, but I guess that's why we think about these things while we at home in the comfort of our own, uh, you know what I mean? Or at work, you know what I'm saying? Getting it in. But uh, I thought that was funny because a lot of people had a lot of opinions and shit, but I didn't feel like it was that cut and dry. Like, I didn't feel like, 
oh, she is 100% wrong, and that nigga was completely justified in his use of force. I didn't feel that way. I don't feel that way. So, it's two more uh, stories that I could possibly touch on right now. One of these Jones was inspiring, and I want y'all niggas to hear this just because uh, it's Monday, and y'all got to go to work. You know what I'm saying? A new CEO says employees can't work remotely after all, and they revolt. You hear me? You hear me? Okay, so check this out. I ain't subscribed to the Wall Street Journal on this, John. I got it on my phone, so I can't read this. But let me tell you what happened. The gist of it is he basically made an announcement and was like, hey, this whole branch is going to be able to go remote. So you know what happened? whole bunch of motherfuckers sold their cars and shit. Some niggas sold their properties and moved out of the city because they found out they could do their job from any home, right? All they needed was an internet connection and a computer. So these niggas sold their shit, moved out of the fucking state, right? And these niggas completely all got the fucking bomb dropped on them when this nigga was like, oh, you know what? It doesn't make sense right now. We're going to have to wait a couple more years before we could put that in uh, action. And you know what these niggas did? They was like, oh, no, fuck that. All of them. All of them revolted. Now, they didn't have a, a, a union. If they did, it's an overnight union. Uh, and they basically all stepped up to my G. And now my G is a joke. And uh, he's got way more bad publicity than he wants. And all of those people will not be fired. At least I have faith. That they won't be fired um because they didn't do shit wrong and on top of that like how you go about like giving niggas their money back for the crib they sold or you know what i'm saying like that's crazy niggas is crazy and it's also crazy how um how much a job can affect your life you know what i mean like this nigga makes a decision so it affects so many people so now when they make a decision and this nigga changes mind they whole shit fucked up. They whole shit's falling apart. I think that's unfair and it's crazy. That's how shit works. But I just wanted to give y'all a little of this of this Monday motivation to let y'all know. Y'all niggas ain't powerless, man. Go in there and fucking put up a fight. Because these niggas need y'all. I know y'all. Y'all do good work. Y'all do good work. All right, so uh, the last dumbass thing I'm going to talk about is... Um, and I'm going to say it's dumb, too. I'm going to say it's dumb. Nah, see, I don't... Equipment, it's 80 Nah. Let's see. I don't know how to look it up. I don't know what keywords to type in. Um, let's try Chicago. I appreciate y'all bearing with me, man. And my homie was like, yo, nigga, just play videos. I'm like, well, nigga, if I play videos, then ain't nothing to be said. I'd just be playing videos. Um, Chicago, man sentenced 35 years hey yo stop me if y'all heard this one <laughs> stop me if you've heard this one okay let's see big news uh hollywood unlocked on msn does that sound reputable i don't know fox news let's go fox Everybody knows Fox. Okay, Illinois man sentenced 35 years for beating, sexually assaulting brother's girlfriend and setting house on fire. All right. See, now this is, this is crazy because this is way different than what Twitter told me. So I love this. I love the fact that I'm finding out more information. An Illinois man was sentenced on Friday to 35 years in prison for bludgeoning his brother's girlfriend with a hammer sexually assaulting her and setting the couple's home on fire in 2017. Timothy Gregory, 43, pleaded guilty to attempted murder, aggravated criminal sexual assault, and aggravated arson. He pled guilty. That's a, is that honorable? I don't know. Will County Circuit, Will, okay. Will County Circuit Judge Amy Bartani Tomzak sentenced Gregory to Will County, okay, the county's called Will. I'm sorry, guys. Will County Circuit Judge Amy Bertani Tomchak, Tomjack <laughs> sentenced Gregory to 35 years in prison and three years of mandatory supervised release, according to Fox 32. The judge entered a guilty but mentally ill finding, which will not affect the serving of his sentence. The sentence will be served at 
and Gregory will receive 2,364 days credit for time served. Gregory went to the home of his brother and his brother's girlfriend on Infantry Drive in Joliet on March 25, 2017, when he repeatedly bludgeoned his brother's girlfriend on the head with a hammer, prosecutors said. He then sexually assaulted the woman in the living room where she was passed out. After the victim regained consciousness, she saw Gregory approaching her, so she ran into the bathroom and locked the door. The victim passed out again, and when she regained consciousness, she noticed smoke coming from the bathroom from under the door. She opened the door and saw the house engulfed in flames, Gregory standing outside of the bathroom door waiting for her. Gregory attempted to push her into boxes when she attempted to run to the front door. Oh, he, he must have told this story because he didn't get that made it. Um, when she attempted to run to the front door to prevent her from leaving the house, she ran outside and was assisted by a bystander who observed her bleeding and staggering. The woman was transported to a hospital where she put into medically induced coma for six days and underwent numerous surgeries. The house also suffered extensive damage. Gurrier engaged in evil and sickening conduct that will continue to haunt this courageous victim long after today's sentencing decision. Will Count, will Count State Attorney James Glasgow said, Although there is no sentence that can undo the real-life horror this woman experienced, the years Gregory will spend in a cold jail cell will prevent him from committing this sort of savagery on another person as he bears the consequence for his utter lack of humanity. Okay. Dog. That's not the fucking story that I fucking was told. Now. Let's go to Hollywood Unlocked. Presented by Bing. Chicago man has been sentenced 35 years in prison after confessing to fatally shooting a woman who revealed that she was transgender three years ago. In June 2020, we first reported how Orlando Perez, an 18-year-old student at Bojan High School, had shot and killed a 37-year-old Selena Reyes. This is a whole different story? What the fuck? See, that's crazy. I'm sorry, y'all. That's a whole different story, I think. Yeah, that's a whole different story. All right, anyway, June 2020, we first reported how Orlando Perez, an 18-year-old student at Bogan, at Bogan High School, had shot and killed 37-year-old Selena Reyes Hernandez on May 31st. The shooting happened after he met her at her home in the 3300 block of West 71st Street that morning. At the time, Brendan Dianna, chief of detectives for Chicago police, had claimed that Perez, who is now 21, was hanging out at Hernandez's apartment when he asked her if she was a woman. The Chicago man became enraged after Hernandez revealed to him that she was transgender. After the revelation, the Chicago man left her home, and moments later, prosecutors said he came back with a gun and his face covered. Chicago police said he obtained surveillance video. They obtained surveillance video of him wielding a firearm as he neared her home. Once Perez reached her apartment and opened the door, he went inside and shot Hernandez in the head and back for a second time. Perez fled from the home and then returned again to fire more bullets into her chest, neck, and hand. During the initial bail hearing, assistant State Attorney Jane Murphy claimed Perez kept seeing her face and it made him mad as hell, so he returned to Hernandez's place and fired more shots into her body as she was on the floor. Hernandez's family members would soon discover her body after hearing noises coming from the basement of the home. Upon Perez's arrest, the first-time offender confessed to authorities about the fatal shooting and was charged with first-degree murder with bail denied. Chicago police also said that they had obtained photos and video on the victim's phone that confirmed Perez was in her home, even seen washing his hands before the murder. Since his June 2020 arrest, it is now being reported that 21-year-old Orlando Perez has been sentenced to 35 years in prison for murdering Selena Reyes Hernandez, a 37-year-old transgender woman, after pleading guilty to first-degree murder on 20... On Thursday, September 14th, Judge Nicholas Cantus ordered him to nearly 40 years in prison. Meanwhile, it is noted that the prosecutors in the case offered the Chicago man a plea deal that involved him dropping multiple counts of first-degree murder, armed robbery, home invasion, and burglary. According to the National Black Justice Coalition Executive Director David J. John, Selena Reyes Hernandez became the 17th transgender person known to have been murdered in 2020. He emphasized that there is a need for increased protection and respect for transgender lives. That shit sucks. So, the reason I'm bringing this shit up 
and the reason I'm even talking about this is because some people online was basically saying that the ball should uh not be in trouble at all because they were saying that it should be considered rape for somebody to spring their gender on you after having sexual uh I don't know contact with them I guess you would say sexual contact because like he became enraged because of uh, the fact that they he 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 did something and then he was ashamed of doing something I guess but people online was motherfucking tripping. And I gotta say that I disagree with that shit. I will say, now, you can't kill motherfuckers because you made crazy decisions with your life. Now, I don't know really how to get into that shit because ain't nobody really saying shit right now. But I will go ahead and stand on that and say, you can't kill motherfuckers because you made crazy decisions with your lives. But other than that, I ain't got no other opinions about that shit. I think the alternative is I guess on the on the on both sides, maybe to round it out and try to say something positive about it all. Uh I guess you just can't be fucking random people too often, man. You got to go back with motherfuckers, man. You can't fuck random people too often. That's what I say. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, there was no, there was no, there's no justification for the actions there, but I don't, I don't think, uh, you know, everybody, there's, there's blame to be put around. But, you know, you know how niggas is nowadays. Everybody's afraid to blame the dead. Everybody's afraid to victim blame. But at the end of the day, nobody's perfect. I know that. You know that. We know that. So niggas be fucking up. And uh, that's just the end of it, I guess. Exactly. Exactly. Or, I mean, at the end of the day, though, the truth is fucking important. And it shall always prevail. Actually, I got a good quote about the truth. This one me right here. <laughs> this one's me right here. The truth can be ugly sometimes, but she'll always cook and clean for you. Always. So, I'm going to go ahead and get into my actual quote of the day. We can get ready to get on out of here. And then uh, I'll say goodbye to y'all until tomorrow. This quote is Confucius. And I guess this is a nice little Monday motivation quote for you. Man said, it doesn't matter how slowly you go, as long as you do not stop. Like I said, that was Confucius. He said, it does not matter how slowly you go, as long as you do not stop. Now, it's funny because I've been a, uh, a professional in various instances where urgency was very important. But you know what was more important than urgency? Consistency. Motherfuckers were way much more rather have the nigga that they could depend on every day than have the nigga who's banging it out, banging it out. Can do it quicker than the other guy. No, you can do it quicker, you can do it quicker, but guess what? What about on Wednesday? What about on Thursday? What about on Friday? You know what I mean? So that consistency, man, that's all it really takes. Ain't nobody going to fire you for being a little bit lazy this week. Just make sure your ass show up every day. So with that said, God bless y'all. Make sure y'all go ahead and check out TRM Podcast on all of your podcast and streaming platforms. And uh, if you haven't followed me, please give me a follow. I got some goals I'm trying to get to. Um, also, I'll follow back. And... Uh, Follow the TRM podcast on Twitter for some good tweets and some good sports content. And uh, all of these videos get reposted on a fancy clown on YouTube. So if you feel like it, go subscribe over there. Or if you just want to check out shit that you missed, go check it out over there. With all of that said, stay away from these uh, pernicious things out here, man. They dangerous. They try and take shit from you. And uh, y'all be out. I mean, y'all be good. I'm going to be out.
Peace.